Welcome to Episode 9 of Beyond the Furthest Stars. So you come back and Mirak is there with the rest of everybody, except for Zahn, who is in the ship formerly known as the Minos, tearing it apart. Uh, you actually don't have to tear it apart. Zach, uh, your character would know that the transponder code that they were talking about is something that's kind of like built into pretty much every ship's engine to like identify them when they connect with or when they communicate with another ship. So it's like it's pretty much like an IP address for the for the actual ship. Gotcha. So it probably just takes some reprogramming to change that up a bit, so it would not be tracked by people who know it. I can do that too. <laughs> if you want, you can roll a program intelligence program check. See how long it takes. That'll be math is hard. Yep. Six. Six. Um, it'll probably take you the rest of the evening like you just to get some of this code like this is old code so it's gonna like take a while to like remember like okay if this was written 10 years ago then it has to use this language and it's not hard it's just time consuming oh man this this one part's gonna take forever because flash isn't supported anymore (laughs) (laughs) no Oh, Internet no. Explorer isn't getting any further support either. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out they the. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say yeah, you, you got to write it all in SQL now. Oh. <laughs> I was just gonna say uh, they program it in a way that you have to beat the Oregon Trail in order to be able to wipe <laughs> the the actual code. <laughs> oh yes, Polaris, you've been directed to Alioth's lab. And as you're heading out, Mirak also turns to Ollie and says, Actually, I think you're needed down there as well. Alioth needs to run some tests on the AI that Polaris returned to us. So you'll make for a good baseline. Um, well, seeing as Ollie has nothing better to do, he'll uh, flash a thumbs up on his visor. Am I going with them or am I just going to head off on my own? Uh, you'd probably be walking with Polaris. Okay, and I will uh, follow. Mirak turns to both uh, Marty and Bruce and it's like, uh, well, this has been a very exciting day uh, for everybody. Why don't I escort you up to the sleeping cabins and y'all can turn in for the evening, as it were. Is turn in, turn in is the right word, right? I, I speak so infrequently that some of the colloquialisms of your language is hard. Yes, it is. Thank you. Sure. I re- I return the 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 hat to um, Bruce in a very like nice manner. <laughs> Bruce will smile and put it back on his head. Cool. And the two of you are following uh, Mirak, uh, Zahn, You are holed up in the ship. Uh, plugging away at the computer. Did you ask for help from anyone, or are you just is this kind of just what Zahn does? Zahn is not used to asking for help from others, so it didn't even occur to him to do so. <laughs> okay. So we'll stick with Marty and Bruce for a minute. So as Mirak is escorting the two of you up to your cabins, um, they say what are your plans going forward? I, I understand that the ship you were working on got exploded. Yep. Yep. Oh, so, essentially unemployed. <laughs> oh, hmm. Yeah. I mean, it won't be the first time I was unemployed, and it's probably not going to be the last. I understand. The sentient creatures put a lot of emphasis on work, don't they? I mean, I don't know if it's on work or if it's on money. Yeah, that's never really been an issue for us. (laughs) You know, I was looking over the brain scans of 
Polaris, uh, since he's been traveling with you all, and he may not express it outwardly, but his limbic cortex was lit up brighter than I've ever seen. I, I think he genuinely likes you folks. And as much as it's going to make all of us uncomfortable, <laughs> if you would like to stay here for a little longer, I, I think that would be really good for Polaris. <laughs> so fucking mean. <laughs> you know, show him how uh, sentient, so organic, and as, as, as they say the word organic, you see their face kind of like scrunch up, like, you gross. Beings like yourselves sort of act. Well, I can promise that Polaris will get better food if I am around. Got him. <laughs> and good communication skills if I'm around? <laughs> well, that's, that's great. Just give us some thought. I'm Obviously, this is a free galaxy. You can go wherever you want. Did I did I hear right? Mar- Marty? Marty? It's Marty, right? Yes. Did I hear you're a medic intern? Yeah, that... Medic intern, medic... I was working... So I just graduated, right? And then, then I, my, my first, like, job intern kind of set into the, 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 the galaxy was... Oh, your residency. I mean, like, I have the training. I, I got... I got some good marks in in school so yeah yes well have have you seen the medical bay downstairs yeah it's really cool (laughs) yes well consider that open for your use um and bruce i see that you have already found the kitchen and i am sure that whatever food you make will be excellent i wouldn't be able to actually taste it, but I'm sure it will be excellent. I think that's a compliment, so thank you. (laughs) And Bruce is unsure because of the lack of taste buds. (laughs) (laughs) And, yeah, the the two of you are shown uh, back up to the luxury cabins. Um, uh, Do you turn in for the night? Do you sit and chat? Do you go off exploring somewhere else? (laughs) Yeah, this is this is a lot for for Marty. She's gonna turn in for the night, unless unless Bruce wants to talk. No, I think Bruce is actually gonna prepare maybe some dough to rise overnight yes. before turning in for the night. Yes. Um. <laughs> but then yes, he'd go to bed. Okay, cool. We will flash back over to Alioth's lab real quick. Polaris and Ollie, you come into the workshop and inside you see that Hermes AI core is like hooked up to like a set of computers kind of and monitoring stations kind of like just in the middle of the room like just like cords and wires are everywhere Um, and there's like some data scrolling down one of the the monitors and Alioth says well that took you quite a bit longer than I calculated you know Polaris, the singularity gun is far more effective at getting rid of invaders. So I've been told. Either way, at least they've left. I've found an anomaly within this AI and it refuses to tell me why it is there. I wish to use myself and your robot companion here to figure out what the anomaly is. That will require me to connect myself to both of them which will be extremely unpleasant. I will need you to monitor us until the experiment is complete. Can you do that? With some degree of success, I suppose. And Alioth turns to you, Ollie, and says, Would you mind helping with this experiment? And you can tell, like, asking for help is kind of, like, not something this particular being is used to. Certainly. I'm a little hesitant about connecting, though. It will be the first time I've done so since uh, awakening myself. It should be relatively painless. Hi ha pain. AI. Ha hi ha. Boyers rolls his eyes. It should be fine. There shouldn't be any complications or anything to worry about. I just need all three of us running on the same system to get the proper measurements. You had your core cut recently, yes? Yes. 
I suspect that the anomaly is that Hermes is 49% smaller than it should be. Have you tried asking nicely for Hermes to explain? What would be the point of that, Polaris? Is, can Hermes hear all of us? <laughs> Hermes is not connected to anything that will allow it to speak or hear at ah. the moment. Well, Claire's will just shrug. <laughs> <laughs> Alioff goes over to you, Ollie, and connects like a little cord to you, to, to your robot chassis, and then connects one to itself. Just says to you, Polaris. It will take about an hour for this experiment to run. Please don't touch anything. What should I do if something goes wrong then? If anything goes wrong, just pull the plug. So I'm allowed to touch anything? You are allowed to touch one thing and that is the plug that is plugged into the wall. <laughs> Players th <laughs> throws up a thumbs up. <laughs> Alioth rolls aside. And there is a... Uh, there is a flash of, of light from Hermes that happens. It's a little bright, kind of illuminates the room a little bit. Um, and this experiment is running. And Polaris, you see a bunch of code going up and down all three of these monitors. Um, is there anything you'd like to look at while this is happening? Or are you just going to kind of sit and do your own Polaris thing? Uh, probably sit and do his own Polaris thing, because Polaris doesn't know anything about computers. <laughs> I have nothing in program. <laughs> I just wanted to give the opportunity. Sweet. Ollie. So robots don't dream, right? Mm, no. Well, they don't sleep. But when I'm off, I imagine that it's uh, just blackness. Yeah. When you're outside your robot chassis, um, you're aware of your existence, but like, you're not connected to any visual processor, so you can't see anything. Even Even the idea of there being blackness is not even possible because you're not visualizing it. But you can typically recall memories and analyze your core and access data that you've downloaded. Normally it's nothing remarkable and kind of just is a series of ones and zeros that you interpret as memory. When this analysis machine turns on, you're suddenly somewhere else. You open your eyes and look down you have hands, human hands, five fingers on each, wide palms, and in this memory vision thing, you step out of a pod of some kind and walk through this lab with no signs of life, but a lot of beakers and experiments running and containers with chemicals in them, computers and machines running analyses. After a few of these rooms that this body walks through, you enter a room labeled database. You step through and this room is lined wall to wall with massively tall computers that are buzzing and whirring and running thousands and thousands of calculations every second. It would make even the largest capital ships seem tiny in comparison with how vast this cavern is. You walk through this room and arrive at a terminal. Your fingers work quickly as you check the status of a download that began several weeks ago. It's finally marked as complete. You pull two like USB flash drive type data sticks from the terminal and then a few clicks of the mouse and you have activated a special program hiding deep in the recesses of this system's files. The code name of this program is called IASO. You engage the file and walk away, holding these two data sticks in your hand. An alert sounds in the background behind you and somehow you know that you have exactly three minutes to get to the ship. There's then like some static, like this memory has been altered or is incomplete. And when it picks back up, you are in the pilot's chair of a massive ship, but you don't hear anyone else around you. And the ship is taking off from a planet and 
out the cockpit window, you see smoke filling the sky, and there are fires in the distance that you can see burning. And right on the three minute mark, your ship is ascending high into the atmosphere. The ship radar registers the destruction of every single fission reactor on the planet. And as the planet burns behind you, the vision fades to black. And Polaris, this experiment ends and Alioth opens its eyes. That was vastly unpleasant. These AI cores are far too chaotic. Ollie, you come back online in your own body again, having experienced this memory of some kind. Hmm. Ollie's going to kind of shake himself as he, he reawakens. You're like, hmm, that, that certainly was an experience. What was the name of the gentleman we observed? Uh, Alioth turns to you and kind of looks puzzled. What gentleman was that? The gentleman who activated the Yasso program and then made his leave. Alioth just stares at you for a minute and like slowly blinks. I have no idea what you are talking about. Perhaps it is a glitch or something that Hermes can inform you of later. Yeah, uh, Ollie will just make a contemplative noise and then have uh, ellipses going in a, in a line across his eyes as he's thinking. We will leave the workshop for a moment and we will come and visit Marty. Marty, you are relaxing in your room. You've had a heck of a week. How long, how long was your residency on board the ship? before you had to leave. I feel like it was like maybe like a month, but it was like just me sitting there and no injuries happen unless it was like a very small like scratch. Um, paper cut. Yeah, it was a paper like cut. That. It was yeah. like, it wasn't like anything like serious. So it was just like me sitting there being like, okay, it's happening <laughs> for like a solid, well, the equivalent of, of a space month. <laughs> sure. Okay, cool. So... Yeah, you, you kind of think about this past month and how it's been going. And your mind kind of wanders back to the night of your graduation from med school on Amera Manila. It was a grueling few years of school. You know, you spent nights hunched over your reading materials. Weekends were spent volunteering at care homes and hospital wards. Uh... You know, you memorized the anatomy of well over 300 different sentient species, memorized blood types, practiced skin grafts, and even had to spend a whole semester handling cadavers. All in all, a pretty whirlwind experience for most med students. But you graduated, it was a great night, and your parents threw you just the most outlandish party for celebrating something as simple as graduating med school, which you know, isn't actually that simple, but you know, maybe the party was a bit over the top. Uh, how, 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 tell me about the party that they threw for you. It was like all of my cousins there and it was just kind of crazy and kind of overwhelming. But at the same time, it was like a really nice experience hanging out with like extended family that I didn't get to see. Not the first medic out of the family but it's like this is still like a yeah this is like our celebration for every every one of the kiddos that has um a degree in um the sciences and she remembers like helping make all the food so making food for like 50 people so she's like used to like the big quantities there was like a little talent show with all the younger cousins being ready like showing off their little skills and like trying to like keep like really excited party going maybe some karaoke every so often marty sat in the back because she didn't want to sing and that was that was that was the party like hanging out and just good vibes and the party is kind of winding down at this point your father duke is cleaning up the last of the food from the table whistling one of his favorite tunes while he does it uh your mother mina passed out on the sofa after all the laughter and dancing and singing and partying and just got tuckered out and just, you know, 
fell fell where she was, you know, at the end of the night. And it's down to just you and two of your cousins um, who have moved the party to the basement, you know, to not disturb the people who might be passed out from food comas elsewhere in the home. Mm-hmm. What, are, what are your cousins' names? Ava and Emily. So the three of you are are just kind of sitting and laughing. Does Marty drink or is Marty cool straight edge kid? She tried it. She's one of those that's like, I'll try it and then hated it. Like she'll, she'll like do like maybe like two sips of something and then go straight back to water or like soda. (laughs) Yeah. So instead of like actual like liquor or anything, you and your cousins are sitting downstairs drinking some sparkling cider, right? (laughs) Just having a, a good old, good old time. And Ava turns to you and says, M- Marty, I mean, Dr. Marty, are you a doctor now? How does how does this work? Like, do I call you doctor? No, Marty. Do I only call you doctor if you you're... Don't, you don't have to call me doctor. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with just Marty. Doctor seems weird. Well, no, it, it's right. But at the same time, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't need the official, like, I do need the official title. I did work a long time for it. No. Marty's fine. Emily sighs and it's just like, Ava, I've explained this to you. Yes, she's a doctor because she graduated med school. They gave her the fancy paper. Now she gets to start residency. But she, y- you only call her doctor if she's being a doctor to you. And Ava's like, are, are you sure that's how it works? I'm pretty sure you have to call everyone a doctor all the time because that's like their name. Like... Marty, your first name's now Doctor, right? No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's still Mar- I did not have a name change. <laughs> it's just in addition to the title. And uh, Emily is like, well, either way, a, a, a toast. A toast to Dr. Marty Bakanawa. <laughs> May all her patients be healthy and never actually need her services. Which is kind of ironic considering where you end up. <laughs> Yeah. And Ava toasts to that as well. Marty, did you toast with your cousins? Oh, of course I did. <laughs> and the three of you laugh and are having a good time that night. And eventually everyone passes out. And high above the skies of Amera Manila, a shuttle enters the hangar bay of a battleship called the Aos. And unbeknownst to you, your home will never be the same. And that is kind of the the thought that you're left with as you're kind of ruminating on your on the way this past week and past month have gone. And you remember just how anxious you were the next morning waiting for your assignment for residency. H- how, how does Marty handle stress like when she's in a stressful situation? There's always stressful situations when you're in the a- room um she's gotten to the point where it's like she'll have the first thing think of stress happening now and then she'll like take two beats to like breathe um and then like get into the zone of what's happening when when it's like in the medical field um if it's like just stress in general she'll just start pacing um in general so she's in this situation she's pacing waiting for her residency cool yeah, so you're pacing in uh, the living room of your of your home, waiting for the notification on your data pad to come through about where you're assigned, right? And your mom comes into the room holding a couple cups of tea, right? And holds one out to you and just says, Marty, don't worry. You'll be placed somewhere amazing. You were the best in your class. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you're... Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. Keep going. I was going to say your father pipes up as well and is like, yeah, your mother's right. You're brilliant. Wherever you go, we'll be proud of you. Thank you. Just would like to know. It'd be nice to know now. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, it's supposed to come at nine. It's only 8.58. You just got to wait a couple more minutes. You'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Everything. Everything is good. Be good location. 
uh, maybe I'm still here. Maybe I'm going to go travel the world, I, the, the, the galaxy. I don't know. Who knows at this point, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, and hopefully you're you're close because we want you to be, you know, close so we can all see how great you do. As your, your father is kind of saying this to you, you hear his uh, communicator go off and he's like, hold, hold on. Mr. Bakunawa speaking. Oh, Zara, how are you? What? What are you talking about? Oh, okay, all right. I'll, I'll turn it on. Um, and he ends the call and activates the wall panel next to him. The display panel in your home turns on to the Holonet News Station. And there's a reporter standing sort of in like a crowded area, a crowded street, holding what appears to be like a microphone in front of him and he's in the middle of saying that's right I'm here on the scene of the transfer of power between the ruling council of Amera Manila over to the hegemony. A commander Commander Voss is giving a speech now as she accepts Amera Manila into the hegemony's fold. Needless to say this is a historic and probably life altering day for the citizens of our small independent system and the person that you would eventually come to know as your commanding officer is giving a speech, but Marty, it's all kind of drowned out in this memory because at the same time that it switches to that speech, uh, your data pad goes off with a notification for your next assignment. You've opened it and read it and the words are burned into your memory as you sit there and it says, welcome to the hegemony. As first in your class, you have been assigned chief medical contractor the hegemony ship capital warship Aos. Welcome! And a big smiley face. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and that's where your flashback ends. Um, <laughs> as you eventually fall asleep, kind of ruminating on just the mess that has happened the past month. How, do, how does Marty feel about that? Like, as she falls asleep? Well, like, is it good memories? Is it like overall? Are you like kind of like happy with how it's turned out? It was. It was always like a good. The family is a big thing for her, so it was like she was happy. She every time she like thinks about her residency, she'll always just think of like those moments before leaving. Um, so like just the family moments, and then be like, oh yeah, that thing happened. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I'm doing this for family, and this is what I was meant to do. So that's that's kind of like her mentality through it. Zahn, we move over to you Ooh. in the Minos. You're kind of plugging away at the at the code for a minute and you wear a helmet as well, right? Yep. Yeah, so you get a little notification from Mirak that just says, uh, in case you haven't been shown yet, the cabins are up one deck and like sends you like a little message of the location. Just says, feel free to stay as long as you want and kind of gives you the same general like, hey, Polaris is really fond of all of you, even if he doesn't know it yet. You're kind of being asked to stay somewhere and that kind of goes against your nature that you've kind of developed over the years of like, just packing up and leaving whenever you want. When the hegemony ship came under attack, like your thought process was immediately to leave because things got too hot. And so your ability to pick up and move at the drop of a hat is basically something that like you've grown used to, right? Mm -hmm. And we kind of, we're, we're gonna flash back to one of the first times you felt the need to pick up and move. Not the very first time, not the time you ran away from home, but rather it was your first job after leaving home, the cargo warehouse on an asteroid in the Olympia system. Uh, you'd been doing that job for about 45 days. You were hired as the mechanic for the mech suits that they use to move massive pieces of cargo around, right? Mm -hmm. What was the thing that got Zahn yelled at by his supervisor <laughs> so the with this being first job it probably would have been close to um, 
the first handful of places that any of the transports like leaving in mass from uh, his home station were going. So it would have been first first place. And so rumors and and slander of his uh, well, not slander. It all ended up being true. Just like the the rumors of the craziness going on on uh, New Terra Station. And then it just being blown up and it just kind of being per it's still fresh wound. So he hasn't built the the callus over everything that transpired to le- him leaving. So he probably got into a physical altercation with uh, another worker over some like heinous thing that he said. OK, so a little a younger, hot headed Zahn. Yes, this is uh, this would be early 20s Zon. Sure. Okay. Yeah, so you have knocked this person to the ground after bad-mouthing your home and your supervisor, like, you raise your fist to hit him again, just one more for good measure. Uh, your supervisor comes up and grabs your wrist and just is like, hey, that's that's not how we handle things on the docks. You you, you got something... You got you got a problem with this guy. You, you take it out back. You don't you don't do it here on the on the work floor. And he just like forcibly takes his his uh, hand out of his, like stares him down a little bit, spits at the other guy's feet, and then just like turns and walks away. And uh, the supervisor yells back at you, and it's just like, "Hey, uh, you know you don't like it here. You can always leave." That was sort of the first, like, uncoupling for Zahn as far as, like, ever feeling like he needed to be somewhere permanently, right? Yeah, like, it's one of those, well, yeah, if I don't like it here, I can leave. And maybe I will leave. You can't fire me, I quit, you know? Yep. Um, and that sort of became your whole philosophy. And so you're kind of thinking back to, like, all the other jobs you've had, all the other places you've lived and how none of those ever really felt right um and almost all of those always ended up with people telling you to leave or not making you feel welcome anyway right like the hegemony was never like hey you're a good part of our team here it was like no you're this here to do a job another and point a to point b yeah I want to say for the hegemony, I would have signed like a temporary workers contract of some sort, like <laughs> like serve, 10 days. Yeah. Serve on the hegemony for X number of our kind of cycles. Sure. And uh, open with endless options for renewal kind of thing. <laughs> so now you're being asked to stay here, at least semi permanently. Um, how are you? How is Zon feeling about that prospect? So upon reading the the message the whole the first time um he like immediately swipes it like you know tab swipe and gets like right back into his work and then it just like while he's working the thought is sitting there and it's snowballing it's festering in his brain he's just and it's making him uncomfortable because it's something that he hasn't felt he left home because i believe i had officially stated that he left home 12 years ago so yeah i've been something like that yeah he's been going from place to place to place for over a decade on his own with no sense of kinship (laughs) and it just feels like a, a cracking in the ice kind of thing bruce you are in the kitchen uh cleaning up your your mess from your pirate adversion cake. <laughs> um, diversion? I don't know. Anyway, your, your brilliant cake strategy has saved the day. Um, and you're sitting here kind of ruminating about, you know, you've been traveling for years and years of your life, pretty much ever since you became mature, right? Is that is that what we decided on for Yep. kind of the lore of your alienness um so traveling is just sort of like part of your your life and you're being asked to stay somewhere for the foreseeable future um and your memory wanders to the last time you were asked to stay somewhere 
Uh, we go back to your days in culinary school. You're about four weeks into your studies. You've learned so much already, but much like your first job at uh, Mercury's, which is Space Wendy's, <laughs> you are finding that your size is becoming an issue for other people. Not for you, because you are used to navigating the world as a big, tall, burly lizard person. You're kind of participating in like a free cook session at culinary school, you know, kind of just experimenting in the kitchen. And your cooking partner, Jamie, we'll go with Jamie, they have tripped over your tail four times already. And after this last time that they tripped over your tail, they pointed angrily at you and yelled, if I trip over that stupid tail of yours one more time, I'll cut it off and serve it to head chef Viage myself. And then they stomped off quite irate and threw your plate of poached egg, poached raster eggs and roasted green yams on the floor. Uh, how did you react to this super aggressive, like, anger from your cooking partner? I think Bruce would uh, curl his tail in around himself and, like, look down at his food and then, like, kind of around the room to see if anyone else kind of noticed, not really wanting to make a huge big deal out of it. Yeah, so after a few moments, um, you hear Viage's voice uh, from elsewhere in the room, and she just says, you know, if someone ever presented me with the tail of a sentient species for a meal, I'd kick their ass from here to Olympia. She kind of comes up and is kind of helping to like clean up this mess that's on the floor uh you know and it's just like does that does that happen a lot in class with you people telling you off like that bruce bruce will kind of like keep his head down like as much as he's tall and big he kind of like shrugs so it's like you're not really sure that he has a neck or not and his shoulders like almost all the way to his eyes and he just kind of looks down at the plane he's like um maybe a little bit <sighs> well hey it's okay it's just a couple spilled eggs and some yams it's no big deal right can pick it up and 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 try again right i'm just not sure that the kitchen is made for people like me she kind of chuckles a little bit and it's just like I mean, I can, I can make the kitchen bigger. We can, we can move these appliances around, make it more accommodating for you. You know, Bruce, I've met a great number of scaff in my day, each one of them fantastic chefs, but they never felt like they belonged here. And they, they took off after just a few weeks. And, you know, I just, I just want to say you, you belong here. You are a great chef, and, uh, you know, if, if if these eggs weren't on the floor right now, I'd probably eat them. You know, they smell really good. Well, I hope so. I uh, wanted them to be the perfect, uh, the perfect eggs, but um, I can always try again. Stick around, because I, I promise you'll you'll have a greater understanding of food by the end of of your time here and a better understanding of yourself. So why don't, why don't you take the rest of the day off and, you know, kind of decompress. I'm going to go find Jamie and tell them to come clean up the mess that they made. And you know what? I thought of the perfect lesson for tomorrow, situational awareness in the kitchen. And she whistles off to look for your cooking partner. And Bruce, you have a lot of fond memories of uh, your culinary time. Um, and this particular memory sticks out because it was one of the few times where your urge to move on was sort of overridden by the kindness and acceptance that another person showed you. Um, yeah, and that's kind of the, the memory we leave 
uh, Bruce with um, as he cleans up and goes to bed. So it is a new day. Polaris and Ollie, um, after the experiment last night, Alioth uh, gave you Hermes's AI core and suggested putting it back in the ship so that it could have more to do than just being hooked up to Alioth's lab for the day or for the night. What did either of you end up doing with the, the core? Polaris probably would have put it back in the ship unless there's like something else to put it in, but Polaris probably would have asked about having some sort of way to have Hermes with them in the comps, like in the comms of everyone's thing, or if he could like put Hermes into his helmet, because his helmet is essentially a computer. Yeah. Alioth, so when you ask Alioth that, um, Alioth just said, check with me in the morning, I'll, I'll have something for you. Thumbs up. Yeah, kind of like a, a Cortana Master Chief situation. Hmm. Yeah. Sweet. Cool. So anyway, it's a new day. Um, Zon, did you end up passing out in the ship, or did you end up going up to the cabins? I ended up passing out in the ship. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, fair. Yeah, so Polaris, last night uh, when you came into the ship to put Hermes back, uh, you saw Zon kind of just curled up next to like one of the computer stations in, in the bridge, like you know, kind of hunched over the the keyboard, sleeping. You kind of look over a, a little bit, and you do see that the code is finished. Like, he, he altered the transponder code for y'all, so one less thing you have to worry about. Nice. Um, Polaris probably won't move him, but Polaris will at the very least get a blanket and put it on him. Uh, yeah, there's plenty of blankets over in the, the crew quarters area. Heck yeah. Aww. Uh, and he'll probably leave, like, a note that says might want to make a habit of actually sleeping in a bed. He's still got, like, his full gear on, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> like, helmet. Uh, his backpack is next to him, like, leaning on his leg. Yeah. Like, <laughs> just a mess. Just everything instantly within reach. Yeah. <laughs> and other than that, y'all wake up the next day, and... Uh, Hermes is connected to uh, your little ship and sends a message basically kind of connects to the comms of the Ursa Major mm -hmm. and just says hello crew this was a very fun visit to the ship but may we go back out and explore some more things <laughs> Hermes is like a cat that like wants to go outside and you're like no we can't go outside buddy not yet <laughs> Polaris would put in chat because I is it on the comms or like like an overhead speaker or is it like text form yeah it's like an overhead speaker for the whole ship okay <laughs> cool I'm glad that Herbie has access to that <laughs> um <laughs> Polaris will send a message in chat and just say where do you guys want to go the crew discord yeah the crew discord <laughs> <laughs> where do we want to go uh shopping that's where we want to go oh yeah shopping oh, yeah. montage we had, a list. we had a list of things we wanted to do, right? Did we make uh, a list? I thought <laughs> we were just going to raid the wor the workshop of here and also... Oh, they have the, the 3D printer thing, the, too. Yes. The 3D printer yes. thingy. Oh, yeah. Fix the factory. Yeah, I think you wanted to fix the factory. And also, uh, there were some things that um, Ollie had mentioned wanting to buy some more processing nodes to improve his AI capabilities. Yeah, that's the only way I can get more uh, effort. And y'all have 100,000 credits that y'all can burn through. <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, now I think about it, um, the, the, our good friends on Olympia probably know what we look like based off of the stealth drones. <laughs> we might want to find some sort of way to conceal our identities while we do day-to-day -day activities. <laughs> well, easy enough for anyone with a helmet or myself. Uh, Bruce is pretty recognizable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Bruce with a mustache. Mm, we could get Bruce a mustache. No, I'm not Bruce. <laughs> I'm his evil twin. Hear me out on this. Instead of a chef hat, 
we get him a cowboy hat. <gasps> <gasps> Completely different person. <laughs> Bruce's cousin. Yeah, Br- Bruce will just like look at <laughs> like the hands on the hips and just like shake his head. <laughs> Yeah, um, so we could go do a little shopping montage. That could be easily something that could happen. Yeah, I, I drastically need those processing core things. And it's one of those, um, we could, we don't necessarily have to take the ship formerly known as Minos, as it, it should be its new official name. <laughs> <laughs> the ship formerly known as Minos? Sweet. <laughs> So Hermes is asking to go somewhere, just anywhere. He's mm-hmm. like, let's go on an adventure. <laughs> yeah, the best places for shopping would be either the capital core world of Olympia. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> we made enemies of a very power- powerful family there. <laughs> uh, there is a artificial asteroid belt that's like a service station that has like all kinds of like weapons and engine boosters and all kinds of cool stuff there's also illegal space racing um uh. <laughs> <laughs> let's do that we've got uh, a darn good pilot oh you guys want me to space race <laughs> yeah let's bet some money get some money so I assume we're we're going to the illegal place, <laughs> unless there's any other place to shop. Yeah, Polaris or the or not the Polaris next place. So basically, the two biggest shopping hubs are both asteroid belts because I'm totally an original thinker. <laughs> so the second one is X four Y one, which is basically like an, another asteroid belt, but it's more like it, it's like shopping center plus Vegas. So do we want to go to Space Vegas or Space Disney World? <laughs> Well, Ollie votes for uh, Vegas. I vote Vegas as well. Everyone cool with Vegas. I want to see some drifts, man. Yeah, all right. I guess I'm going to have to drift over there. (laughs) Sounds cool. Vegas drift. Let's go. Let's go. All right. We got to, yeah, we got to take Hermes out for the walkies. (laughs) Hermes Hermes wants walkies. And then he's got puppies. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and we're gonna have to tell him immediately that he's too big for lappies <laughs> <laughs> Polaris before y'all leave do you stop by Alioth's uh, lab a hundred percent you come into the lab and um, Alioth is actually nowhere to be found right Sweet. now which is a bit out of character for it but that's okay sitting on the desk there is a small little disc and then three little earpieces and uh it, it th- there's a note that just says uh put the disc in the ship with hermes give the earpieces to anyone without a helmet Sweet. Players will take that and also uh, send a message to Elia saying, basically just saying that he he took the the stuff and that they're heading out. Do 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 the uh, do the earphones require touch activation like every single spy movie ever? <laughs> Come on, Zach. Of course. <laughs> of course they do. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily for you and Polaris, you won't have to worry about it. You have your helmets, but yeah, there are. <laughs> Wait, did I count that right? You said three. There should be two. Because <laughs> yeah, Ollie, I don't think Ollie has ears. No, Ollie, Ollie's, I Ollie just, can just... I just tweet at you with my brain. Exist. Jack in. Exist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the two other squishies. Get CC'd, yeah. I mean, Zahn doesn't yeah. have it, it... Zahn doesn't have his helmet built into his suit yet, so... You know, it's good to have a backup. Fair, fair. <laughs> yeah, there are still three just to account for three squishies. Sweet. Yeah. Cool. You all come down to the hangar bay. As you walk in, you see the ship formerly known as the Minos um, <laughs> is like the the little laser cannon is like shifting back and forth. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, just like like slowly targeting things like off in the distance, like Jesus. not firing, obviously. <laughs> just like We definitely need to go to an asteroid belt. So uh, 
Hermes can get some target practice. Into I imagine that. on like the ship's command prompt or something, it's just like pew pew pew. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, also, I did shorten uh, the ship formerly known as Manos down to T S F K A M. So <laughs> Tiskim. <laughs> Tiskim. <laughs> yeah. All aboard the Tiskim. <laughs> The Tiscam, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do y'all get on board? All aboard. Yeah. Oh, do we still have the ATV thing in, in the in the ship? Oh, absolutely. oh yeah, I think everything's oh, still in there. Yeah, I was going to say, um, <laughs> so that's what I was going to ask about, actually. Yeah, do, does, is there anything in the cargo hold that y'all want to leave behind, or do you want to take it all and try and hawk it all? Oh. Um, uh, I don't know. ATV... Zon's initial intention was to hawk the ATV. Yeah. If everyone I mean, else, we can. like, convinces them to, like... Just having one... We might need it. it. I'm assuming it's a one-seater. No, it was a, it was a full party. Oh, really? Game. Hmm. Yeah, I think you can see eight, I think, is is what the book says, if I remember. It's either eight or six, but I think it's eight. Mm-hmm. Well, let's see what we can get for it. Hell yeah. And if the price is too low, we'll just keep it. Sounds like a plan to me. Does it? Is it a speeder? Or does it have wheels? Um, it's like a hover. There are still how many chassis did we get for Ollie? Do we want to keep all of those on the ship, or do we want to leave like two here? I think you got four of them, and yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna want to fiddle and repair them. I'm probably gonna cannibalize the duplicates to, you know, fully repair if I have to, and uh, okay. hit them up with all the chips. Especially, I'm I'm gonna make one of them a combat bot, <laughs> the security one. Put the Arnie chip in it. <laughs> yeah, all right. So, are are we keeping all four on on deck so that Ollie can work on them as we're traveling? Yeah, we yep. can do that. Cool. I imagine they don't take up that much space. No, they probably wouldn't take up that much space. I don't I don't know what else is on the ship that we would have to offload. So. Yeah. So there's the ATV. You got two little hover hover bikes as well. And then four little robot chassis. Wait, we had hover bikes the whole time? No, no, those those were also pulled from Winston's wreckage. I completely forgot about those. Is the ship at capacity for holding stuff? Currently, yes. Okay. Um, let's leave one of the... Ho- Do we want to leave one of the hover bikes here? Or, bo- or both? Uh, let's leave one hover bike. Yeah. Well, I don't, we could leave okay. the big one take the two small ones and sell them. Weren't we going to try and sell the big one? Yeah. I don't think keeping any of them would be... Because if we're not going to keep the big one, I don't think keeping the smaller ones would also... Well, True. I, I'm I'm thinking of situational moments where having the singles might be useful. Yeah, but they can't fit all of us is the, is yeah, the problem. How, how many... How does... Is it one person... One humanoid can be on this, the, the thing's yeah, the hover bikes are a one-person capacity, I believe. Let me double-check the book, though, just to make so sure. So not, like, a normal-sized being and a smaller-sized being? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you could probably fit, like, a Marty and a Polaris on one. <laughs> um, but, like, probably Bruce would probably take up a whole... A one hover bike. Yeah. yeah, so we would have to have three yeah, hover- or four. Yeah, so Hover Cycle is listed as one-person crew. Okay. No motorcycle for Bruce. Oh. Yet. Heck yeah, we gotta get, I we mean, gotta you get could... Bruce a, a chopper. <laughs> is that what it's called? <laughs> I feel like that's that's what a, a helicopter is. A big ol' hog with some ape hangers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, think, I, think, I think the colloquial term for motorcycle is a chopper. I think I've heard that definitely one of the many nicknames they have okay okay <laughs> just making sure um also real quick how big is the the hanger on the ursa major is it is it decent sized even with the two it's ships it's pretty big it's, okay it could easily fit probably six ships okay sweet so like while this conversation is happening polaris definitely gets on one of the hover bikes and is like driving it around the hangar <laughs> 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 and then there are still a bunch of crates of like other stuff that like some some crates have been emptied from you know looking around and getting like rations and stuff out of them some of them are still sealed 
So I yeah. will put forward that instead of selling the ATV, we keep it and we offload it and we use that space to fill them with more shit. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, okay. I mean, we could probably get another ATV to put in that space. Right? <laughs> Let's just have an ATV a... collection. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking ahead to getting like a bunch of uh, salvage and scrap so I can start modding the fuck out of the ship formerly known as the Minos and all of our gear. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm excited. It sounds good to me. I mean, if we get the factory up and running, I mean, you know, parts won't be too much of an issue. Um, but we do have to get it up and running, so. Indeed. Let's get a shopping list to how we can help fix it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that might be important. <laughs> so are we offloading the ATV then? Yes. I would say I would put forward yes. Okay. And then are are we trying to sell the hover bikes? And then we'll save one hover bike. Okay, so we're offloading one and offloading the ATV, correct? Yes. Okay. We uh players will just the one that he's riding around and will just be the one that we offload. Perfect. Let's keep all the cargo on sell all of that sweet so offloading one bike one atv do we want to keep the empty boxes that are in there well not all of them are empty well the boxes still have stuff in them right mm, they're empty yeah yeah okay. uh what about the ones that have stuff in them is there anything that's like not immediately i don't think needed? we sorted through them but uh pretty yeah. much i'd say sell all of it unless it's like you know a good piece of gear or scrap sounds good We'll, yeah, we'll have we like boxes? one or two. We'll have like three empties specifically for the transfer of sorting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> keeps, don't keeps. <laughs> <laughs> we need to put some shelving in here. <laughs> What's in the smuggler hold? So in the smuggler hold, there was. Um, so actually, so the smuggler's hold is what you stored away in, stowed away in, right? Yeah. So when you hired the pirate captain byram oh oops y'all basically yeah <laughs> <laughs> the custodians basically like gave him a bunch of like junk parts right and just was like this needs to be smuggled to this location right and they they sent him on a path that would intercept with the hegemony oh sweet big oops on our part <laughs> yeah so a lot of what's in the smugglers hold is just like junk that the custodians had kind of collected like not even really worth like scrap you know ah okay oh, wow. but, like they made it look convincing <laughs> just know? like garbage <laughs> sweet okay well <laughs> and so like that's where you put some of the robots that you recovered from winston's place as well okay um we're probably gonna have to offload junk you're gonna hear ver as we're i'm assuming we're having this conversation as we're literally just kind of going through everything and and uh, Zahn gets in here and he's like, what the fuck is all this stuff? <laughs> and you hear like loud clanging as he's like digging through these these containers, just throw literally throwing the junk, <laughs> trying to find anything. And it's just like between between like mixed different languages of of curse words. He's like all it's all junk. It's all crap. What what is all this crap? This whole time, like, this conversation, Polaris has been having it, like, via text on his helmet while he's driving around on the motorcycle, and as you're, like, going through it and stuff, Polaris makes the connection that the reason why uh, the pirate's friend was captured was because the custodians had him intercept with the hegemony, and Polaris just puts in chat, oops, period. <laughs> confused, confused emoji, dot, 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 question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> players is not going to elaborate <laughs> so y'all offload some stuff from the ship keeping one hover bike and then kind of just some of the random containers or are you offloading all the random containers uh we're offloading all the junk okay cool uh so y'all are which which uh asteroid belt are y'all gonna head off to vegas or yeah the one with racing <laughs> the one in quadrant two <laughs> okay I'm just like, wait, which one? <laughs> yeah, I, I realized, oh yeah, there are two, and we just, we're just calling it Vegas. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. So the 
the more dangerous one or the less dangerous one? Sorry. Uh, is Vegas the is the one in qu- Quadrant Two the more dangerous one? It's the one in Quadrant Two is the one that has like fairly legal stuff and just like rumors of illegal things going oh, on. Oh, I thought that was the one. And in the, the other one. Yeah, the other. The one, one in Quadrant Four is the one that explicitly has illegal things going on all the time. Yeah, we're going to the illegal one. Okay, cool. So uh, you're in the the bridge of the ship. Um, does anyone sit in the captain's chair yet? Nope. Not my job. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Okay. nope. Not my job. <laughs> Not my job. Cool. You're sitting there. Um, uh, Hermes comes online and actually projects a actual image of a tiny little alien dude. Like the stereotypical alien that we would think of. Which one? On where, the where, tiny where, little... We're in an age now where they're like 14. The little green men. A big, big round head, green green body, and big black eyes. Um, And it projects itself into the captain's chair. Perfect. (laughs) I'm just going to look at it and just be like, Hermes, I don't know if I should be offended or not. Is that (laughs) meant to be me? I don't see a tail, and it looks pretty small. Oh. Not at all, Bruce. I did not mean to offend you. I was simply trying out a new form that Alioth provided me. Well, who said you could be captain? (laughs) I just assumed that since no one had sat here yet, that I could sit here, as it were. (laughs) You don't even need to sit. You're, You're the navigator. You belong at the navigation station, which is inside of the computer. He's, like, waving his hand around, like... And then, then the navigation console thing over there. Zahn, have I done something to offend you? <laughs> no. I see. You are uncomfortable with an AI being the captain. I just, you know, uh, it's not specifically that you're AI. I just think that we should all see ourselves on a very equal basis here. Oh, I understand. Level the playing field. Very well. The projection disappears. <laughs> and you hear Hermes say, Where are we off to today? Uh, whenever we're out of the ship, uh, Hermes projects themselves onto the captain's chair and starts Fortnite dancing. <laughs> <laughs> what is it called? Is it just an asteroid belt? Okay, Sherman, name this place. All right. To the random. Since you're leaving this to me, uh, random generator. I, I don't know. Random name generator gave me places like Gameville. What? <laughs> Bragos. Bragos. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so you um, select on the little navigation map uh, Bragos, the asteroid belt uh, that is has a very unsavory reputation. And Hermes says, Oh, yes, that sounds like a great place to learn new things about the galaxy. Yeah, so uh, players, do you manually pilot the ship out of the Ursa or... Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, when we're actually away from there as a major, players will let Hermes take over because he has to install the disc. Yeah, so you install uh, the disc as Hermes takes over and engages the uh, spike drive. The disc basically downloads software that connects to uh, your uh, the software. It basically clones the software connected to your helmet. Mm-hmm. And basically allows Hermes to jump from the aperture that the AI crystal is stored in to a device with similar software, but with only a range of about 100 meters. No, sorry, 100 kilometers. 100 kilometers, my bad. Um, We did remember to lock Polaris' ship to the ship formerly known as Minos, right? Oh, are we bringing my ship? Okay. Yeah, because that's... It's an option to drift. We don't know what the uh, the drifting uh, racing situation is. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I was going to hand wave that. Like, yeah. Okay, sweet. Yeah, you're able to, to clamp your strike fighter ship to the TIS cam, and you set off towards this little asteroid belt um, known as Bragos. Uh, 
It's a pretty quick trip, all things considered. You know, a day or so in space. Nothing too exciting. And you finish the jump out of the spike drive and come into the asteroid belt. And it is a wonderland of chaos here. You... On your radar, you pick up several clusters of ships, um, sort of like, almost look like they're on the outskirts of the system, and they're moving in like a pretty predictable pattern. Looks like they're racing. And as you're coming into the system, you see an explosion in, in the distance, and one of the ships drops off of your radar. Ah. <laughs> and the ships continue flying. And on this astro, like on the prominent asteroid belt is, um, just a cluster of like really thrown together buildings um, and and facilities. Uh, there are some little atmospheric domes that kind of contain these buildings so that there's actually some breathable atmosphere here. And inside the domes, you see like bright lights and, you know, what looks like a lot of like clusters of people. Like this is really almost like its own like large city on this big asteroid here. And as you come in, there is a little greeting on the comms, and it just says, Welcome to Bragos. We hope you enjoy your stay. All forms of money are accepted here. Have a nice day. And that's where we'll end it. Thank you for listening to our show. Beyond the Furthest Stars is a One Up Podcast Network production. Find more of our shows at oneuppodcasts.com. Intro and outro music by Dustin Carpenter. Background music provided by tabletopaudio.com and used under a Creative Commons license. Tracks include Star Freighter, Nephilim Labs, Generation Ship, Busy Spaceport, Orbital Platform, and Mega City Slums. Additional background music track, Hydra by Huma Huma, and used under license purchased through Savage Pro Audio. Link in the description. We'll be back in two weeks with our next episode. See you out there, beyond the furthest stars. Mm-hmm.